We are in for a fun couple of weeks of scientific crafting. So this is all stemming from an idea I had in my brain like last year where I was like, poodle skirt, but science, make it science. So we're gonna be making a 1950s themed period, like 1950s themed poodle skirt out science outfit that's going to feature a lovely science skirt and version two of my periodic table sweater. So some of you may have seen this is my lovely, lovely periodic table sweater. So in this video, we will be working on the skirt, skirt portion of the outfit. And then in next week's video, we're going to talk about the sweater portion of the outfit. So I'll share my secrets of how I made this with you. So that'll be a lot of fun over the next two weeks. So let's start with talking about the design for this skirt. All right, let's talk about the design of this outfit. So I've got this lovely model here because I can't really draw that well. So here we are. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a nice A-line poodle skirt. And then we're going to add in a nice applique. And I think it'd be super cool to have it be like an Erlenmeyer flask with a little chemical in it. And then just putting off bubbles all across the skirt. And of course you gotta make that chemical a nice little fun green color. And then we come in with the sweater. So long sleeve cardigan. I think I'm gonna make it a cropped cardigan so it's not full length because my previous one is full length. And I'll probably just wear like some sort of color trip underneath it. So then these will have my little periodic table blocks and it'll have some nice little cuffed ribbing and a little ribbing cuff around the bottom. So that's what I'm thinking for the sweater and skirt outfit. And then I also went ahead and already braided my yarn stash. So the colors for the sweater are going to be a blue and gray. Um, so I think I want this skirt to match the blue of the yarn I'm using in the sweater. So they kind of go together. So I don't know, terrible sketch, not the best artist, much better knitter and sewer than artist but this is what we got to work with so let's go ahead and get started so with that design in mind it's time to head off to joanne's i've got my phone for joanne's coupons i've got this virtual list to keep me on task for what i actually need to buy and these handy dandy blinder glasses to block my periphery and keep me from buying any fabric for projects that i don't need <laughs> okay just got back from joanne's which happened a week later than I said I was gonna go to Joanne's last week, and then life happened. I also have my leftover cheer wine from a probably late night bedroom trip to cook out, so I'm just a wee bit caffeinated, which is usually not what I'm like either. <laughs> Let's see what I got at Joanne's for the 1950s science poodle skirt. So I got the base, which is gonna be in this blue felt. I was trying my best to match to the blue yarn I used in the, I'm using in the sweater. It's not quite a perfect match, but it was the closest thing they had and it'll work enough. It's close enough. Um, felt was actually historically used for poodle skirts because it was a really easy fabric to cut and sew and you didn't have to hem or do anything to the edges because the edges stay looking nice and neat if you cut them nice and neat. In a project without a hem, that makes you very happy. So then I also got some black elastic for the waistband and the felt sheets for the um, science applique. So we have some nice sciencey slimy green I'm gonna use for like the chemical inside of the flask and then some black and white to make the bubbles and the flask itself. So the first thing I gotta do is a, is a better map actually. <laughs> And that is measuring out the pattern in order to make the circle skirt for my poodle skirt base. So let's go do some math, I guess. So while I sit here on the floor and start measuring and cutting stuff out, let's explain circle skirts. Circle skirts are a giant circle of fabric cut out with a smaller circle in the middle to put your body into. So basically to do this, we had to do some geometry i know it's so exciting first you need to figure out how to cut the smaller circle in your skirt so that's what your waist is going to go into for that you need your waist measurement and then from there you can take your waist measurement and turn it into 
a radius measurement, a radius of that smaller circle. So to get from circumference or your waist size into the radius, you have to use the math formula, circumference equals two pi r. I know you guys are so excited to hear that again. So all you gotta do is divide your waist measurement by two pi, and that gives you the radius for the smaller circle. And since my fabric is folded in half, I get to only draw out a semicircle instead of the whole circle. So that's how you calculate the smaller circle, the one your waist will go into. And then in order to calculate the size of the bigger circle, you will need to measure how long you want the skirt to be. I wanted my skirt to be past my knees, so I measured that accordingly. And then I just added the length of the skirt I wanted it to be to the radius that I had gotten earlier from my waist measurement in order to create that bigger circle that you can see me drawing out now. And then it was just a matter of cutting it all out and then the next step would be to put on the elastic waistband. So since I had cut out just a giant circle of felt, I didn't have to put in any seams or anything, and now it was time to attach on the waistband, which just involved getting a piece of that black elastic I showed you, measuring it to the size of my waist, cutting it out, sewing it into a loop, and then stretching it out over the fabric of the skirt. Now with the waistband all attached on, it's time to sew it on and again this did involve some stretching out of the elastic because elastic can be stretchy and in order to get this to work well to snap back to my waist size it needed to be stretched out so i just sewed the elastic on in a loop and then after that was all done voila i had a skirt easy as that cutting out a giant circle and attaching a waistband wow that is the easiest skirt i've ever made in my entire life that makes me very happy because I thought it was going to take me longer than it did. So let's take a look. Brought my handy dandy mannequin in. So here's the skirt. I'm going to back up enough so you can actually see it. There's the skirt. Looking good. Looking full. And now it's time to put on the little Elmire flask applique. So I want it to go start down here and then do a trail of bubbles. It's going to go up there. Oh my god. <laughs> to do this, I'm planning on using the same like iron on paper that I used for my tide pool quilting project because I really liked how easy it was despite the fact the shapes were hard to cut out how easy it was to just draw on it cut out a shape and then iron it on very little sewing so let's get started on that so let's have a little drawing session here and this is a terrible drawing but bam I don't even know if you can see that sample drawing come here little mannequin friend so I feel like if it, actually that might be a wee bit too big. Let's make that a little bit smaller. Oh, well I'm just gonna do that for size right That feels better. So it's gonna be approximately this size. This is kind of a hot mess. <laughs> Sorry friends. Okay, so I have made this and I'm going to start doing the layering and cutting out all the pieces now. Okay, so while I sit here and draw more pieces, let me explain a little bit about what I was doing. So first I cut out the whole Erlen Meyer flask piece, and then I went in and cut out little pieces for the bubbles. Um, and in addition, eventually, I don't think I showed this, but I also cut out and made little green part to go inside of the Erlen Meyer flask. So now all I had to do was take my pattern pieces and then add in more of the details and then cut out all the pieces on the uh, interfacing that I was using and stick them all together. So here's the Erlenmeyer flask being made. And I thought it would, it would take a second to kind of talk about the history of the Erlenmeyer flask because it's such a common scientific chemistry like symbol, but how often do we think about where we, it came from? And I just actually kind of want to learn, so that means you guys get to learn too. So the Erlenmeyer flask was actually invented by somebody named Emil Erlenmeyer, who was a German organic chemist. He actually came up with a lot of really important concepts in organic chemistry, which included isolating several organic compounds for the first time, which greatly contributed to our understanding of organic chemistry. And for those of you who don't know, organic chemistry is the chemistry of compounds containing carbon. So he was also the first to suggest that double and triple bonds could form between carbon atoms, which was pretty important for, you know, the the entire way chemical bonds and different atoms could bond to each other in chemistry. 
a quick break right here and you can see me trying to figure out where I want to put all of my little bubbles and flasks on the skirt. Emile Erlenmeyer affected the Erlenmeyer flask. The bottom of it is flat so it's not easily toppled over. There are round bottom flasks that are kind of they're round on the bottom and these guys don't stand on flat surfaces because they're rounded bottoms. So the flat bottom of the Erlenmeyer made it very useful. In addition, it had a very narrow neck to it, meaning that chemists could mix a, mix up a chemical by swirling the flask and it wouldn't spill out the top. This narrow neck also meant that you could heat up whatever you wanted to heat up, a chemical in it, and you'd have less evaporation. And then finally, you could stop that narrow neck with a cork or a top to seal it and keep your chemicals safe. So that's just a little bit of history of the Erlenmeyer flask I wanted to share with you guys today. Hope you enjoyed. Let's see how it turned out. Rose card is finished and it looks so good. Look at it. Oh my goodness, and it twirls so nice. And it didn't even have to hem it. And it's got this freaking adorable Erlenmeyer flask on it and the bubbles and I am so excited about how it turned out. I kind of want to just like make 20 million science poodle skirts now because this was actually a really easy project um, that came together basically how I envisioned in my head, which I feel like never happens with projects like that. Let me get a little bit closer. Pardon the mess around me. The joys of, fine, of trying to move around while you're filming. And then I can't see my skirt. There we go. So this was a lot of fun to make. And next week, you guys will see it again as I walk through the second part of this amazing 1950s science inspired outfit, which is going to be a periodic table sweater and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I made it how I made the first periodic table sweater I have and then it'll be the final combination outfit of my dreams so stay tuned for that please like this video subscribe to my channel check me out on Instagram and keep it sciencey